Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisala with Audioholics, and today I would like to give you five steps to better bass in your home theater. This is gonna really make or break your system if you follow my advice here. I wanna help you get better bass, because in reality, my friends, bass constitutes about 30 to 40% of your enjoyment in your home theater environment. So if you don't get your bass right, you're really depriving yourself of the whole movie theater experience. So let's go over step one, two, three, four, and five in order. Just realize a couple of things. When you get through the steps, you're gonna probably have to go back a step as you make adjustments and recheck and edit things as you need to go. So I do wanna preface this with one very important thing. If you're really serious about bass, I highly suggest you download the free software from REW, which is acoustic measurement software, and get yourself a USB microphone you can get them for under 100 bucks at Dayton Audio or Parts Express. They come with a calibration file and they're even calibrated for the right SPL. So you plug it into your computer, you load up REW, and it'll tell you to load the calibration file and it'll really calibrate your SPL so you're measuring actual levels. It's well worth the investment. If you're serious about bass, you guys really need to do that. So why don't we start with step one. I would say location, 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 as the guys in real estate would always say. Subwoofer positioning in your room is really important to getting good base. Now we have guidelines. If you have a rectangular or square room, I'll throw up some guidelines. You can look at suggested places you can put your subwoofers. You could either do uh, mid walls or you could do corner placements. I don't like four subwoofer mid wall placements when you put them in each of the mid walls in the room because you lose your what's called low frequency coupling factor it's not very efficient doing four mid wall subs it's much more efficient if you do four corner subs one in each corner and then when you get all that balanced out you eq out the uh, base bumps you get as a result for corner loading that's a much more efficient approach in fact the guys at Harmon and and all the major sound demos when i was at cedia they've all kind of gravitated towards four corner placement with sound field management or eq that's really the best way same thing happens when you have two subwoofers i'm assuming most of you guys are going to use probably two subwoofers in your system you can still go with corner placement as long as you follow these guidelines eq out those bass bumps you're going to get a great effect now if you don't have a rectangular room or you're limited to where you can place your subwoofers you can't follow our suggestions you could always look at our subwoofer crawl video and what that is is that's the law of reciprocity you put the subwoofer where you're sitting and you crawl around the room with bass tones or with your favorite music and you find locations where the bass sounds good and you mark off multiple spots because you could put you know a couple of subs in the room at those locations and that's a good starting point that's to see if everything works out in your listening position of course using REW to do your measurements and just to get those two subwoofers playing well together. So let's assume for the minute that you have step one down to a science, you found the best locations for your subwoofers. Well, what do you do next? The next thing is kind of related to step one. It's called positional EQ. You want to make sure that your seats or your couches are in good locations for not only for movie watching experience. So you want to have direct line of sight to your screen or your projector, but you also want to have line of sight to your speakers and you want to have good location acoustically. I see so many people that just put a couch right up against the back wall or right up against the side wall. The problem with putting a couch up against the side wall is obviously now you're too close to a surround speaker and you're off axis from the main channels. So you have no good stereo imaging. Don't do that. If anything, put the mother-in-law in that seat. That's where she belongs. No, I'm just kidding. We love you, mom. So the other problem is if you put the couch on the back wall, you're now locating that listening area in a pressure maximum zone of the room. And that's where all your standing waves kind of build up and you get so much bass boost, very unwanted. It's very uneven sounded bass. You don't want to put a couch up against the back wall if you could avoid it. I would suggest we have placement guidelines. You want to put that couch about a quarter of the length of the room. So, you know, Get that couch moving forward about a quarter of the length of the room if you can even a little bit more sometimes if you're able to but again this is where getting measurements in the locations of where you're sitting is going to really determine where you want to put those seats more scientifically not just you know kind of winging it now you can do it by ear but it's a lot easier when you can measure 
So once you get your seats located correctly, that's called positional EQ. You got your subwoofers located optimally. That's the location we're talking about in step one. We got to move on to step three. Now I call this proper time alignment. And there's a couple of ways to kind of do this. Um, if you're plugging in multiple subs, and I'm not just talking about one sub, I'm talking two or four, you want to choose, if you can, a processor that has independent subwoofer outputs. Now, most AVRs that are under $1,000 usually have one subwoofer output, or they might have two parallel subwoofer outputs. What two parallel subwoofer outputs are is it's just a duplicate of the main output. So your level and your trim is basically the same on both subwoofer outputs. If you could spend a little bit more money and get a receiver or a processor that has independent subwoofer outputs, like you spend a thousand bucks on a Yamaha Den and a Marantia, you're gonna get the, the independent subwoofer outputs. It just opens up more calibration options for you. It just makes things a lot easier to do your time alignment because it makes a difference. And I could show you measurements if you time align versus not time alignment in your subwoofers, you don't get them as integrated as well. So if you don't have that ability to time align your subs, more advanced users can pick up something from a little device called MDSP or Mini DSP. And it's a little box that has equalization and delay settings on it. And we've done a video on that as well. So you can take the one subwoofer output of your receiver, plug it into the Mini DSP, and you can get up to four subwoofer outputs and they all have independent time delay, independent level control, and independent EQ. So really advanced users might want to look at that kind of solution. That's a great tool, especially when you're doing multi-sub in your room. Or worst case scenario, if you only have one subwoofer output and you're just going to parallel it out or you're going to do a, a daisy chain of multiple subs, you're just going to have to get a little creative. You're going to have to maybe switch your positioning a little bit, or you're going to have to use the phase control on your subwoofers. And sometimes more advanced users might want to enable the crossover. I know you don't always want to stack crossovers on subwoofers when you're doing the base management in your AVR, but I've actually found if you can measure and you can put that subwoofer crossover about 20 hertz higher or lower than the subwoofer crossover in your AVR, you can induce some group delay into that sub and you can bring some of that time alignment back if you don't have that control in your receiver. So it's just a little bit of a, of a playing game that you have to work on there. But I do find um, time aligning not only with the distance of your subwoofer, but using the phase control of your subwoofers does make a difference. And I preferably would like to see subwoofers that have a variable phase, not just a zero 180 degree. If you could vary that phase, um, in my situation, in my family room system, I, I ran an auto EQ program, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that in, in a little bit. And after I ran the program, I got pretty good integration, but once I varied the phase of the subs, I got rid of a suck out from 60 to 80 Hertz that I couldn't do by just simply time aligning with physical distance in my processor. So it really, you've got these tools in your bag of tricks. You can manipulate time alignment with the delay settings and you can do it with the phase controls on your subwoofers. A lot of people kind of ignore this, but this is very important to really get right if you can. So once we get that right, we want to do level matching. This is the step four that I was talking about. And I'm not just talking about level matching with between the two subwoofers, but you want to get the level matching correct between the subs and your main speakers. Anytime I calibrate a system, I always do it in two channel initially. I want to get the best blend between the main channels and the subwoofers. And I would say as a rule of thumb, you start with the crossover at 80 Hertz in your base management of your AVR but then you wanna get your levels right. And you could use an SPL meter or you could use the auto EQ. The one thing I wanna tell you guys, if you level match all your speakers and your subwoofers, let's say you do the whole calibration at 75 dB, once you get that bass right and you flatten out the response, you could raise those subwoofers four or five dB and it's not objectionable. It actually sounds good. Once you have linear bass in your room, we prefer to have a little elevated bass response. We don't want just a flat response from 20 to 20 kilohertz because that doesn't sound good. That makes the room not have enough bass and be too bright acoustically for our ears. So we do want to kind of have, you know, a little bit raise in bass and a little bit uh, decline in treble to have it sound good in your room, especially when you do a movies that have a lot of high frequency energy. So I think it's important to note that you don't always need to match levels of your subwoofers. I mean, if you have your subs in perfect locations where you're canceling out room modes, then you do want the levels to be the same. 
typically, but there's always exceptions to the rule. Um, in my case, if I'm in an asymmetrical room, I tend to put one of my subs in a pseudo near field environment, which is close to the listening area, which helps pressurize that area and stimulate room modes uh, more effectively. You don't want to localize that subwoofer. Even if you cross it over at 80 Hertz, if you have a sub that's too close to you, you tend to localize the pressure waves of that sub. So in that case, when you're doing something like that and you have a subwoofer a couple of feet away, that's when I suggest you lower that sub. You don't play it as loud as the other sub in the room. You can lower it to a 3 dB, just make it less localizable for the listener, especially the person that's sitting right next to it. So there's always exceptions to those rules, guys. So once you get a good baseline, you get the multiple subs, two or four subs, playing well together, measuring decently in REW, having a reasonably good integration with no major suck outs or make cancellations between the subs. That's when you can get serious, putting the icing on the cake, putting the cheese on your cheeseburger. That's when you can either do manual EQ, preferably parametric EQ, where you have adjustable Q and bandwidth and you can move those frequencies around where you need them, or you can initiate an auto EQ program. There's many popular programs out there. You have Odyssey, you have Anthem's D, um, ARC program, you have DRAC. There's a lot of different flavors of auto EQ. And I would just tell you that these systems work better if you enable them to work better. And they're gonna work better if you get good integration initially in your system before you run the calibration. So, it's a little bit of trial and error. You're not always gonna get it right the first time. I see people that just go and plug all their equipment in, they run the auto EQ, they don't even set the subwoofers at a decent level to begin with, and the, and the auto EQ system is trying to gain up the levels and levels and it's boosting the subs and it's just, and the phase might not be right between the two subs, and it just becomes a mess. And then they get frustrated and say, hey, this system doesn't work. So I would really suggest to you that you, you take these other steps, one through four first, get the system playing well, then run the audio EQ, and you're still not done. Because in my case, um, in my family room system, I ran Odyssey. I ran on the Rantz SR8012, and the integration was surprisingly good. They've come a long way um, with the dual subwoofer independent outputs, and Odyssey has done some recent updates, I would say in the last decade, to make their low frequency correction better than it was when it first came out because it was atrocious when first generation Odyssey came out. And I'm not trying to pick on them, I'm just giving you an example because I've had experience with the system since its inception. So I ran Odyssey, I got a pretty good response. Then I went, because I'm, you know, I'm an audioholic, I always have to make sure I get the best response and bass that I can, bassaholic if you will. I went and I started screwing around with the phase on my, on my subwoofers and all of a sudden that 60 to 80 hertz suck out went away. And it wasn't just for the primary seat because I never calibrate for one seat. I calibrate for at least two primary seats. And then I wanna make sure the other seats are good too. In fact, in my theater room, I've got five subwoofers up here. And the only reason why I have that fifth subwoofer is because I had a really bad suck out in the mother-in-law seat and my mother-in-law is such a good cook and she's so good to me. And I wanted to make sure when she sits down and watches a movie with us, she's not sitting in a null. So I added that fifth subwoofer in my room in that case, an extreme case. I'm not saying you guys need to go that crazy, but I am saying that even after you run auto EQ, your homework is not done. Measure the system response after you do that and then go in and tweak. You have multiple variables to tweak. You have, let's review, you have level, you have delay, you have phase of your subwoofers, and you still have position. If you need to vary position a little bit and rerun the auto EQ, that's still available to you. It's not an exact science, especially when you're not in a rectangular room and you're not in a loss, lossy room, a lossless room, because even if you're in a rectangular room, it's still not a perfect rectangle like you get in the room simulators. That stuff never works 100%. It's just a guideline. Never follow anything as a biblical source or you get yourself in trouble. So again, guys, I recommend you try these five steps or these five tips, varying back and forth, and uh, you will be on the path, my friends, to better bass, because I'm telling you, when you get that bass dialed in and you get a good blend to your satellites, it's magical. And it makes the wives happy too, because my wife is so sensitive to having bad bass. And when she comes in my room, I use her as a litmus test to make sure I did it right. 
If she comes in and she hears resonances and it sounds boomy, I get an F. I get a I get a pissed off wife that won't watch movies with me, and I don't want that. And I don't want that for you. I want you guys to make your wives happy, make your kids happy, solve world peace, world hunger. Well, maybe not that extreme, but let's just get some good base. And I'm kind of wondering, what are you guys doing? Why don't you tell me how many subs you're running in your system? Do you follow our guidelines? Do you do this kind of methodical procedure and making sure you get the best base in your home theater? I want to hear from you. I want to know what calibration tips you guys have. Everybody has different ways to skin a cat. I'm just giving you my experience of what I've done in the last couple of decades that have worked for me. I love sharing this kind of stuff with you. And I wanted to also mention to you guys that we've recently launched a Patreon page and it's been doing really well for us. And we're giving you guys services that aren't available to people that are not subscribed to our Patreon page. We're giving you exclusive content on this page. You have to be a member. You have to be a sponsor of us. And by doing that, you're helping us create more of this content. You're helping us increase our production quality. If you've noticed the videos have been getting a little bit better in the uh, resolution and the sound quality. I heard you guys. I know people complain they don't like bad production quality. We're trying to increase that. We need your help to do that. I hope you guys Will come on board and i wanted to read to you the latest patrons on our patreon page just so we could shout out to them because we really appreciate it so we've got alan thornton we got kwm 1800 we have mark chapman we have chris lawrence and we have david medrano or medrino hope i'm not butchering your names too much guys i appreciate your contribution and anytime you guys can want to help on, you're more than welcome to do so. You can give us suggestions on video topics to cover in the future. And my friends, until next time, keep listening. Okay, so guys, we're going to do five tips or tips. I meant steps. Ladies, let me just tell you something. If a guy ever tells you he only wants to put in the tip, he's just trying to get an entrance to the front door. Don't listen to them. Don't believe them. Not true. God, I probably shouldn't have said that. Get this off. Don't put this in the video.